Well, that's a bit of an oddity. So this is a Thompson 32HE8022, which is somebody had left for dead at the local recycling centre. And uh, when I brought it home and just plugged it in as it was, uh, it would not go out of standby. Uh, no matter what you did, it wouldn't respond to the buttons, no nothing. Uh, it does, did show a good standby LED, so we knew, I knew that we had standby power to the main board, and uh, I also measured that we had fine standby voltage by just uh, taking it apart and having a little probe around. Then I tried to just uh, provide 3.3 volts at the power supply turn on pin, which was nicely labeled at the main board, and lo and behold, the power supply actually turned on and gave fine output voltage. So, I, I was pretty certain that the uh, issue was not with the power supply. So what I then did was try to just uh, force the pin on the main board which controls the power supply turn on high and that wouldn't work. Uh, it seems as if the transistor responsible for uh, turning the power supply on has uh, shorted out or something. Uh, because I can actually turn this TV on by just disconnecting the pin from the main board and uh, forcing it high. So let's have a look at how that works. So here's a look at my hacker little arrangement. So I've got a lead going to my power supply here, which I've just connected to uh, a wire that I've pulled out of a plug. And this is one that uh, is labelled the power supply on. So it's no longer connected to the main board, only the power supply of the TV and my bench power supply. And uh, if we plug the TV in and uh, turn the power supply on, and we can see that it starts drawing a quite considerable amount of power, about 100 watts right now. And it's humming away nicely, the backlight is turned on. And if we have a look at the screen and reconnect my ground, uh, we can see that we get a pretty okay picture. Now this is just the uh, analog TV noise, and if we open up a menu, everything seems to be working just fine. We can navigate around, and everything just seems to be in perfect working order. Uh, it uh, does run a bit laggy sometimes. I'm not certain why that would be, but uh, this TV does turn on when you try to turn it on, and uh, it actually does uh, disable the main board as well if we. If press the power button, it will just uh, blank the screen and uh, fail to turn the power supply off. Entering standby mode and it won't power on until you've uh, power cycled the power supply. So there really is something going on with the uh, power supply enable part of the main board. So we're going to have to have a bit of a closer look at that. Alright, so I've now probed around this motherboard quite thoroughly and uh, I have located the issue basically beyond the shadow of a doubt and uh, that would be this standby processor which is a, a an off-brand thing it's labeled WT6702F uh, it's a programmable microcontroller with integrated memory so replacing it is pretty much out of a question unless you have a donor board and there's a fair risk that any other board is going to have a similar problem so the way I went around diagnosing this was by initially tracing out where the power on signal was coming from. And it was coming through a quite convoluted transistor arrangement there, being fed by straight from a pin on this device. I then proceeded to probe around to figure out where the button control input was coming from. And it goes... Uh, partially to straight into this big processor, uh, but it doesn't seem to receive any real supply when the TV is in standby. Uh, but it was also going to a pin on this processor. Uh, so what I then proceeded to do was uh, just uh, uh, jab around, try shorting a few pins, checking if the states changed on the pins when you pressed the buttons and what changed when the TV was on and so forth, and it didn't really yield any fruit except for the fact that one of these pins changed when you uh, press the power button because it was connected straight to the power button. So what I then proceeded to do in order to verify that the issue was in that area, uh, and I got a bit lucky, it was I just heated up this entire area of the board, and lo and behold the TV turned on and turned off quite fine for about two minutes, and then it got stuck in either on or off. Uh, so that 
pretty much narrowed down the issue to that area of the board. And what I then proceeded to do was to heat up the entire area of the board again, quite hard to just using a hot air gun set to 100 degrees Celsius. I put some thermal compound on the processor and just jabbed the heat sink onto it to cool it down, while the remaining surrounding circuitry remained hot. And the issue came straight back. The TV would not turn on. I removed the heat sink, let it soak up some more heat. The TV worked perfectly. So there's an issue inside of that chip, and uh, we're basically screwed. Uh, however, uh, it is possible to basically operate the set. If I just short the power supply on output uh, to the, the supply rail of this processor, just locking it permanently high. Uh, the downside of doing this is that the standby power consumption of the TV becomes about 12 watts, which isn't very energy efficient, it'll become a little space heater for you, uh, but it does allow you to use the TV and you can turn the rest of the main board on and off using the power switch and probably the remote, which I don't have. So, at this stage I'm not really certain what other way to go about it. Uh, one option would be to just design a circuit to basically mimic the functionality of this chip, but that would be a bit of a bother because the power button isn't just a digital on off, it's actually an analog thing which pulls the pin on that chip down to 0.6 volts and all the other buttons on the control panel of the TV put it to different analog levels so it would be a real issue to filter all that out using some analog circuit. It's obviously going into a an ADC on the processor. Uh, sadly, there isn't any data sheet available for the processor. The best I could find was a, a data sheet for some Chinese TV module which used it for a similar application and I was able to figure some stuff out but it had all the pin labels incorrect and so forth so it didn't yield too much fruit. But for the time being I think I'm just going to go the ugly route and just uh, bridge the power supply to always be on and let it run for as long as it runs, warming the room up in the process. And just because I know you want to see it, has uh, how the TV behaves. So it's now connected up to uh, this power outlet, just in its uh, normal configuration. The board is cold, it's drawing about what's in standby. And if we uh, press the power switch, nothing happens. And if I just take a hot air gun, give it a thorough heating, uh, give it a reset and then power it back on. Here you can see the power spikes up to 15 watts for a while it'll now turn off again. Oh no, it went into the on mode because it was on when I turned it off last and now the power button will work absolutely fine as long as the chip is hot. And if I grab my heatsink and just uh, turn the TV off. It will not turn off the standby power now and if we reset the entire set again it will not power on. It's stuck in standby. So I'd wager that's a pretty thorough diagnosis of that chip being done for. And there we go, there's the fix in place. I've shorted together the top right pin with the pin that's second closest to the bottom on the right side. And uh, this will just force the power supply to basically turn on at all times and never ever enter standby mode. I also made the effort to replace a couple of dodgy looking caps right above the processor heatsink. Uh, the new ones are mounted on the other side of the board since they otherwise wouldn't fit underneath the EMI shield. And if we plug the TV in now, it'll turn on just fine and turn off when you press the power button uh, at the cost of drawing about 12 watts in standby. But it does seem to be able to both turn off and turn back on when you need it to, so at least the TV has working functionality now. So let's see how the world's least eco-friendly TV looks. And the answer is like analog TV noise and uh, 
that sadly is a bit too much as we're gonna get out of it right now because uh, uh, I don't have a remote for it and it's one of those stupid designs where you need to have a remote in order to switch sources and indeed in order to do anything so for just a volume and change the analog TV channel so uh, I guess we'll have to call it for this video at least the TV is powering on now and my endeavours to find a remote for it can begin so thank you for watching I hope you are a dirty electricity conglomerate who'd like to buy this TV because it's going to put out a lot of greenhouse gases in its lifetime. Cheerio!